Hello, what's up, guys? Today is uh, the worst punishments in history of mankind. I read that terrible, but let's get on with the video. It's a little bit longer video than I did the, the previous ones, but let's get into it. It's the infographic show, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's try it. I'll make it big here. So, yeah. Colonial era in what's now called the United States of America. A man of the lower classes had been accused by his Puritan overlords of the contemptible crime of stealing a loaf of bread from the local bakery. The judge quickly dismissed the man's hunger, saying that an empty stomach was no excuse for a person to reduce himself to the state of a vulgar criminal. Outside the courthouse, a frantic crowd waited, many of the people armed with wooden paddles, feathers, rotten fruit, and the pu- Wait, he stole bread? ...putrid innards of farm animals. The judge, a stern and unforgiving man, looked down at the condemned from his bench. I sentence you to public humiliation, he so said stealing in a great voice, telling the unfortunate <laughs> thief he hoped he would see the error of his ways. For two full days, the condemned had his feet tickled by kids. Bitter neighbors beat his toes with sticks. Even his acquaintances joined in the fun and covered his face with any kind of garbage they could find. Okay, so oh, right now wave. you might be thinking that out of all the punishments we've ever talked about, this one doesn't sound too bad at all. You're pretty sure you could handle a bit of old cabbage being rubbed into your face. And even though the paddle would sting a bit, it's nothing compared to having your head, fingers, or toes two crushed. Days? As for tickling, isn't that supposed to be kind of enjoyable? Well, uh, that's debatable. There's such a thing as tickle torture, you know? Something that goes back centuries and has been used as a form of interrogation. You're not gonna die, but when you experience what the Japanese used to call merciless tickling for hours on end, you're gonna lose your mind a bit. But tickling is just one thing that happened to people in the stocks. As you'll find out later in the show, stocks. there was also a form of the stocks that resulted in a person losing an ear or two, or perhaps a pair of eyes. And if the maddening crowd took a profound disliking to the condemned, well, that person could die in those stocks Holy in the most gruesome crap. way. So you can stop sneering now about us putting stocks in the worst punishment series. It was, for some people, it was hell on earth, and the torture was not over quickly. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. Some of you might not even know what we're talking about. Okay, this stocks. This part of the toolkit of punishers throughout history is one of the easiest to describe we featured. The stocks this basically consisted of a soldier. wooden frame through which a person's legs were held. The frame could open up, of course, so the legs could lie on the lower half, and then the top half went over the top, and the thing was locked, like solid bar handcuffs for the legs. There were other versions of the stocks, but this is the one we'll start with. They were usually reserved for lower classes, a distinction that back in the day people didn't mind tagging folks with. Being such a simple device, you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Imagine getting put in fuck a, a machine like that for stealing a fucking loaf of bread. Like, <laughs> they're, they're mad. <laughs> ...to find out they go oh. back a long, long way. They even get mentioned way, in the that's Old Danish. Testament. And a couple of Jesus' <laughs> disciples also once found their legs bound in the stocks. You can find that information in the Bible Acts 16-24. to Apparently, while fastened, they prayed and sang hymns. This kind of punishment was popular from the 1300s well, until the mid-1800s. So. And you won't be surprised to hear that the Brits had stocks in most villages and towns. Those Puritans that arrived in the New World were also partial to putting folks in the stocks. The punishment was supposed to be a public one. Thus, the person in the stocks was almost always subjected to humiliation from the people that lived in the I'm sorry, this is a little bit of a side piece, but this guy is incredible. Incredible at narrating. Like, I'm sort of like... Sanity. Well, That's why the stocks me. were situated I, in the place I can't even where talk just about English. everyone passed well, through. I can, but the marketplace was often the public. location of choice. <laughs> Some people might not have known what crime the person had committed, but there was a solution for this. Often the, the way, condemned would have a letter on their clothing. An adulterer would get an A, a thief, a T, a blasphemer, a B, and someone who'd been bothersome while under the influence of alcohol, a D, for drunkard. As you'll soon find out, that letter was also sometimes branded on the person's face. These crimes were the equivalent of what today you might call misdemeanors. Back then, the person would only get the stocks for petty theft, such as the bread heist we described earlier. For armed robbery, which in the past could have been called highway robbery, a much more brutal kind of stocks awaited, and we'll get to that soon. One of the reasons why every town and village in England had stocks was mostly down to something called the Statute of Laborers 1351. In short, this was created after the Black Death, which as you know wiped out vast portions of the Black public death. all over Europe including England. Post-plague, the lords of the country were faced with a problem. Plague. Many of their workers had died, and so there weren't enough folks to get the work done. 
The workers who survived seeing an opportunity started to demand higher wages. Asking for more cash was soon outlawed, as was refusing outlawed. to work at all, which was a crime of idleness. It's a crime. We found this written <laughs> in English that. law. Every town and village is to maintain a set of stocks in which to punish vagabonds, layabouts, and drunkards. If a person, say a plowman or a servant or a shoemaker or a shepherd, demanded a higher wage or refused to work, the resulting punishment was often the stocks. This usually meant being confined to the stocks by their feet. But finger stocks were also common. It made no difference, really, since the person couldn't go anywhere. Throughout the centuries, it really depended on the crime as to what happened to a person while they sat in the stocks. If they'd upset the village, perhaps by an act of aggressive drunkenness or speaking words that everyone found rather offensive, well, they got more punishment. Sometimes that would just be verbal abuse along the lines of, "Ya carbuncle of my eye, you gouty-legged, copper-nosed rogue. Hopefully YouTube doesn't demonetize the language that was bad 400 years ago. All those yeah, I need to be careful my language. I say too many swear words. Thank God I'm not monetized because we're a small channel, but... Well, small channel. No, just started, but... Next time I'm going to insult something, I'm just carbuncled off my eye. <laughs> the gouty legged copper nose rogue. It's all related to diseases, by the way. Diseases were on people's you minds a lot back then. Unlike now, of course. Okay, so you got cursed at and you had your feet tickled, especially by kids, and you might just get a few kicks to the back and punches to the face. It wasn't the end of the world, but it wasn't very <laughs> it gets nice either, Let's go especially play. if you were covered in rotten eggs. <laughs> play. Are they still used now? We found a news article from Columbia which said in 2012 a 34-year-old woman and her 18-year-old lover were put in the stocks for three days for the crime of infidelity. Another case in Colombia involved a young man that was high and attacked his parents. In 2020, several well, people in that high. country were put in the stocks for violating social distancing orders in the municipality of Tuchin. From what we can see, social no eggs or feathers distance. or paddles were Corona. used during the ordeal. The punishment almost happened in the USA in 1989 in the small town of Dermot in Arkansas. There was a curfew at the time, and the punishment was sought after for parents who'd allowed their kids out at night. The owner of the Dermot Pawn Shop was one of the people asking for the law to be instituted, saying the kids were out of control and had broken his windows. He thought the stocks would do the trick in changing their wayward behavior. Okay, now for something a little more serious, when the stocks got blood on them. For poor folks and their misdemeanors, there were the stocks for Infections. the feet. But when the poor or rich for that matter transgressed in a big way, there was something else. This was called the pillory which was the same idea as the stocks, but instead of putting a person's legs between two boards, it was the head and arms that went inside. You've likely all seen oh, a fun version of this terrible. at county fairs where people throw soaked Absolutely. sponges at the condemned. Now let's go back some time and think about how it would feel if those sponges were replaced with stones and dead animal parts. How'd that feel? What if the person in the stocks had committed a terrible crime in a local town? A crime that made people's blood run cold, a crime of violence. Can you imagine what happened to the person in the pillory? Imagine what would happen well, to them that's why they died. That's why so the pillory, died. for one thing, was a lot more uncomfortable than the stocks. The reason being, a person had to bend forward in an awkward position. It was even more imagine uncomfortable if like your ears two were whole nailed days to three the wood, days. which happened from Terrible. time to time. A lot worse happened, too. Nonetheless, you could get out of the pillory almost unscathed, just as a person could have gotten out of the stocks with nothing more than an embarrassed look on their face. Still, rotten vegetables and buckets of offal and blood were often thrown at someone. But worse, the missile of choice was sometimes human or animal excrement. Let's Oof. now have a look at some examples. Unlike the stocks where the poor were fastened, the pillory was the punishment of more well-known people. And so there are lots of examples to choose from. <laughs> Take the story of James Naylor, an English Quaker who thought he'd be fun to ride a horse into the city of Bristol, pretending to be Jesus Christ riding into Jerusalem. You couldn't really get away with that back in 1656. It offended people. Right after the reenactment, he was grabbed by the authorities and charged with the crime of blasphemy. Parliament almost decided to execute him, but instead he ended up in the pillory. <laughs> this is not a way no to feathers treat were used for this man. Well, Once contained in the device, he was branded him, so. with a red-hot poker. The brand, which went on his forehead, was the letter B for blasphemer. If that wasn't bad enough, nice. his tongue was pierced with another red-hot piece of iron. Did the crowd feel sorry for him? No. Hell no. They took their turn beating on the guy. He died two years later during his sentence of hard labor. Then there was the hard pillorying labor. of the famous writer Daniel Defoe. You probably heard of this name from the novel Robinson Crusoe, but he was more than a fiction writer. He wrote about society, politics, economics, and culture. But being an outspoken critic of the way things were back then could result in something much worse than medieval trolling. 
for his thoughts, he was charged with the crime of seditious libel and sent to the pillory. The thing was, a large part of the public liked Defoe's writings, and so as the story goes, no one threw anything at him that could hurt or humiliate. In fact, it's said that people threw flowers on him during the three days he was stuck in that very uncomfortable position. Oh, that's nice. Other controversial writers weren't so lucky. Sometimes they faced the symbolic gesture of having their ears cut off in the pillory, oh, that, an act known as cropping. That's a it happened to Thomas history. Barry, who in 1538 was accused of spreading rumors. It happened to William Prynne and Henry Burton in 1637 because they'd been critical of the church hierarchy. In the US during the 1800s, the people pilloried the most were slaves. The punishment didn't usually oh, happen for all the town to see. The slave would be fastened in the device where he or she was enslaved. You could find sets of pillories in barns or in the fields. During the slave's confinement, they would usually be flogged. It was reported in 1830 that a slave girl in the British colonies was pilloried by an English woman, and she had pepper rubbed in her eyes for 17 days so she couldn't sleep. Now back to the That's depravity terrible. of the town square. Unlike punishment these days, what happened to a person in the pillory much of the time depended wholly on how the crowd felt about someone. That's why writers have said the punishment created a carnival-like atmosphere, a kind of theater event that folks really looked forward to. If someone had a bad day at the office or farm, they could take their anger out on a poor soul who was trapped between the beams. When a girl named Sarah Thomas stood in the pillory, the work. crowd gave her wine and hot pot. Stop. When in 1751, two highwaymen named Egan and Salmon were brought to the crowd's whims, they were pelted with anything and everything. Egan took a stone to the head that killed him, and Salmon died from his injuries after being released from the device. We found a report from 1680 which talked about a midwife named Elizabeth Sillier. She was basically an activist back in the day that fought for women's rights and human rights in general. For her service to humanity, this is what she got, according to the report. Stay she had strong. been hauled out of bed, though she could not rise, set on the pillory, twice struck down with stones by the rabble but lifted up again by the sheriff's officers, and had been kept there till 2 o'clock, though her sentence was to remain only between 12 and 1. She had been grievously bruised and several officers had been wounded in her defense. You heard that right, the mob even got the officers with their missiles. Here's what a newspaper said about highwayman John Waller when he was in the pillory. On Tuesday the 13th of June 1732, this wicked man was put in the pillory, pursuant to his sentence, at the Seven Dials in London, where so great was the indignation of the populace that they pelted him to death. Often people were sentenced to two or three times in the pillory, sometimes one week after the other. The weekend was chosen so the crowd was bigger. The scene of the punishment was usually <laughs> the marketplace. In 1732, a woman named Eleanor Bear was charged with performing an illegal abortion and supplying a man with poison so he could kill someone. This kind of thing really rankled the mob, well, and they let that be known. In her today, first if a doctor few gives hours in the pillory, she was hit with rotten vegetables and mud, like just but the it Michael was Jackson the stones case. that drew blood. She was then taken back to prison. The next week, the newspaper wrote that her face she was still badly swollen. Up. The report noted that again she was pelted with all the apples, eggs, and turnips that could be bought, begged, or stolen, but also with stones. That report said <laughs> she appeared stole. a moving heap of filth. <laughs> she survived, <laughs> though. Stole. After three years in prison, she apparently recovered her health, her spirits, and her beauty. And get this, the fickle mob cheered and played music for her on her release. In England, you had such things as poor laws and vagrancy acts, and that meant if someone was found begging without a license to beg, they could be sent to the pillory for three days and whipped. You need a fuck. You, sorry. You need a license to beg. Holy shit, man. <sighs> Imagine all those homeless people in the streets, they all have to have a license, like a legal license or something, but just a begging license. And they probably have to pay for the license. <laughs> if a person was discovered wandering around without a job, they could be pilloried Imagine. and branded on the forehead with a V for vagrant. Yeah, those were harsh times for the homeless and out of work. Similar punishments were handed out to rogues, which basically meant trouble causers and tavern scrappers and also night walkers, which meant prostitutes. As for accused witches, they got it much night worse. Walkers. If they weren't burnt at the stake, they, they were sentenced alive. to prison and occasionally released for a stint in the pillory. Each time the accused witch would be transported to a different... I don't know if they have uh, this tradition in other countries, but in Denmark, we, uh, we, we every year at the start of the summer, we burn like a big... Uh, well, we we make a fire, uh, a big fire, and then they place like a mascot of like a witch inside it, and then we burn the witch. Well, not a real, not a real person, but well, be, like long time ago, it was a real person, pr probably. But uh, yeah, um, so yeah, that's a fun fact. Well, fun, fun. It's a awful tradition actually. Now that I think about it, <laughs> but 
For a Let's town, get over. So we burn witches. And the crowd had a fresh witch to torture. The 1563 <laughs> Act Against Conjuration, Enchantments, and Witchcrafts demanded that this happen to witches for the first offense. But if they were convicted again of witchcraft, they shall suffer the pains of death. King James the Sixth and First, the okay. guy that sponsored the Bible we all know, was especially cruel to witches. He updated the witchcraft laws and created the Witchcraft Statute of 1604. That decreed that the accused witch should be taken to the pillory every quarter. Again, each town was different every time. The witch had to confess her crime, and if she didn't, well, rotten eggs would no doubt have been replaced with large stones. They didn't often die, but injuries were severe. In 1711 in Ireland, an accused witch had her eye knocked out. What's so hard for us moderns to get our head around is how popular the pillory weekends were. People would travel for miles. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the scene in um, The Walking Dead where the guy, I don't remember his name, he, like, he gets hit with the fucking bat and then his eyes just pops out of just... <laughs> They knew a witch was going to be pilloried. It wasn't only because they loved to see her bleed and hang her head in shame, but also because such events with so many people were a good time to do some business. A weekend pillory was the past equivalent of some big tech or sporting event in today's world. So many different things could result in the pillory too. You have to remember, this was the go-to punishment in times when large state prisons didn't exist. Misdemeanor crimes resulted in the stocks. Serious crimes resulted in death and a lot of in-between crimes resulted in the pillory. Obviously, as you heard, crimes that aren't crimes these days led to someone getting hurt, such as Mary Hamilton, aka Charles Hamilton. She'd been accused of pretending to be a man and actually marrying women. This was seen to be an act of fraud. She was sentenced to prison and also pilloried big no -no and whipped in the, in the towns of Taunton, Glastonbury Wells, and Shipton Mallet. Here's a list of other crimes that resulted in someone in England being put in the pillory. Beating a child, running a brothel, boozing during church service hours, fortune-telling, causing a scandal, oh. transvestitism. The last one was the case of oh. Dorothy Clayton, who in 1575 first was charged with wearing men's well, clothes around the case sure. of Dorothy Clayton telling. A beating child, obviously that's bad. Running a brothel, oh, well, yeah, I can understand. Boozing during church service hours, well, church is the most important thing, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, probably. Fortune-telling. Well, I guess it falls on like which thing is like you're, yeah, causing a scandal. Well, it depends on the scandal, but yeah, uh, transvestism. Yeah, that's not good. Causing yeah, well, a scandal, transvestitism. The last one was the case of Dorothy Clayton, who in 1575 was charged with wearing men's clothes around town. To get that's the mob okay. worked up into a fit of anger, she was forced to don men's wear during her time in the pillory. Alas, the punishment pretty much died out in Europe around the 1830s, <laughs> Wait, as it they did in the USA. By, Although by there are reports of men exactly being pilloried and whipped in Delaware as that late as 1901. Sense. According to an old clipping from the New York Times, a few men received the punishment on one day that year. One of them was Charles Connolly. For the crime of burglary, he stood one hour in the pillory and got 20 lashes of the whip. Others received 10 lashes in the pillory for the crime of theft. No buckets of blood or a cow poo were mentioned in the article. Now you need to watch I Spent My Whole Life in Prison, or fill your head with facts, with 50 insane facts about prison. Well, yeah, apparently uh, the stocks were uh, the worst kind of uh, thing you could do. 20 lashes back then. Uh, the f <laughs> what did I just... The worst kind of punishment that you could receive. Well, maybe not the worst, but like the most embarrassing, the most humiliating. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's uh, educational. If you want more educational videos like this of me reacting to, then uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and peace.